Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. We're going to continue our discussion of the ribs here and talk about how the ribs articulate with the sternum. And we're going to see two major kinds of joints. We're going to see sternocostal joints. We'll then see costochondral joints. And then the reason we won't have a third one is because we actually have floating ribs that only articulate with the vertebra posteriorly, but do not articulate with the sternum at all. So before we go into the ribs themselves and their joints with the sternum, let's get some anatomy of the sternum down. Okay? So right here, this is actually the manubrium of the sternum. This is the most superior part. These bones sticking out on either side, these are actually the first pair of ribs. These little articulations up here at the top, these would actually be articulations for the clavicle. And so the clavicle would articulate with the manubrium in what we'd call uh, the sternoclavicular joint, because the manubrium is still part of the sternum, clavicle, sternoclavicular. If we go beneath the manubrium, this part down here, this would actually be the body of the sternum or sternal body. And then the most inferior part, this little projection down here, is called the xiphoid process, or sometimes they'll just refer to it as the xiphoid. Okay? Now, when we look at each rib, each rib has costal cartilage on its anterior tip. So that's hyaline cartilage. So if we go back and take a look at this right here, this part of the rib right here, this would actually be the anterior part of it. Okay? The part up here with the head and then this tubercle over here, this is the region that actually articulates with the vertebra posteriorly. Okay? So this part right here would be anterior. And all 12 ribs, all 12 pairs, have hyaline cartilage on the anterior tip. And again, that, that hyaline cartilage is the costal cartilage. Now, if we look at ribs 1 through 7, they have what's called a sternocostal joint. So here's rib number one. If we look, we see the manubrium right here, and we see this costal cartilage of rib number one that connects the rib number one with the manubrium. If we look at rib number two, it also has costal cartilage connecting it to the junction between the manubrium and the body of the sternum. And then we see ribs three, four, five, six, and seven. If we follow their costal cartilage up, we see that those have attachments on the sternum. None of them actually have attachments on the xiphoid process directly. Uh, rib number seven has its costal cartilage on the lowest part of the sternal body. Okay, And if we look at all seven of these, notice that they have direct connections with some part of the sternum. Seven, it gets a little bit hairy here because we've got this other cartilage down here from eight, nine, and ten. But if we follow seven around, we note that its costal cartilage directly connects with the sternum. And when you have this direct articulation of the costal cartilage with the manubrium and the sternal body, this is called a sternocostal joint because it's a direct connection between the sternum and cost means rib. Okay? Now, rib number one, its connection is actually what we call a primary cartilaginous joint, uh, meaning that it's actually an amphiarthrosis. It's not a synovial joint. Whereas ribs two through seven, so two down through seven, their connections with the sternal body are going to be synovial plane joints. Uh, that's something that's a little bit unusual about rib number one. It's actually not a synovial joint. It's a primary cartilaginous joint, an amphiarthrosis. Uh, note that uh, these sternocostal joints are also supported by anterior and posterior radiate sternocostal ligaments that we can't actually see right here. So those are our sternocostal joints for ribs 1 through 7. If we move to the ribs 8 through 10, we now have what are called costochondral joints. If we break this name down, costo means rib. Chondral or chondro means cartilage, so we should actually expect the ribs to not attach to the sternum. They should actually attach to cartilage. Now, if we look at rib number seven, again, this was one of our true ribs that actually had a sternocostal joint because it attached directly to the sternum. And we'll follow seven around, and we see that its costal cartilage, yes, attaches directly to the sternum. However, if we look at ribs 8, 9, and 10, what we see is that their costal cartilage does not attach 
on the sternum. Rather, they all, at, in some way, attach on the costal cartilage of rib 7. So if we look at the costal cartilage of rib 8, follow it around, we see that it actually attaches on the costal cartilage of rib 7. Therefore, instead of being a sternocostal joint, it's a costochondral because it's inserting on costal cartilage of rib 7. Rib number 9, it has costal cartilage that attaches on that of rib 8. And rib number 10 has costal cartilage that inserts on that of rib 9. And so if we follow these all, to some extent, they're all going to have a common attachment on the cartilage of rib number 7. And so these are what we call indirect articulations because they don't directly attach to the sternum. They all attach to the costal cartilage of rib 7, which then attaches on the sternum. And all three of these costochondral joints, 8, 9, and 10, these are all considered primary cartilaginous joints, just like we had for rib number 1. They're not synovial joints, they are amphiarthroses, primary cartilaginous joints. Now, that takes us from ribs 1 down to 10. We still have two more pairs of ribs, those are 11 and 12. And 11 and 12 are actually what we term floating ribs, and it's kind of a misnomer because they're not completely floating like the hyoid bone. They still have an attachment on the vertebra posteriorly, but anteriorly they are floating. They do not articulate with the sternum either directly or indirectly via costal cartilage. Okay? So ribs 11 and 12, they still have that costal cartilage tip right here. If I actually move this out of the way, you can still see it. They still have that hyaline cartilage, but that cartilage doesn't really do anything other than provide some uh, protection to the anterior tip. It doesn't attach to the sternum, and it doesn't attach to this costal cartilage up here. So the fact that this hyaline cartilage right here does not attach on anything, that makes ribs 11 and 12 floating ribs. But remember, they still attach on the vertebra posteriorly. And that's going to lead me into what I want to talk about now. And that's some exceptions um, about some of the ribs. Um, and other ribs, other than 11 and 12, there are some anomalies uh, throughout the rib cage. And we're going to talk about those. So the first exception here that we're going to look at, ribs 11 and 12. They have a single large articular facet on their heads. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then they have no necks or tubercles. What does that mean? But when we took a look at this general rib right here, I made it sound like this is for every single rib. And it is true generally for ribs 1 through 10. However, uh, the head and neck are a little bit different. And also, this tubercle is absent in ribs 11 and 12. So remember, this tubercle right here is where the rib articulates with the transverse process of the corresponding vertebra. However, ribs 11 and 12 do not have this tubercle. Therefore, they do not articulate with the transverse processes of the corresponding vertebra T11 and T12. Okay? So they don't have this tubercle. The other thing is they don't have a neck, and their head's a little bit different. Okay? So let's talk about this head. And this head is actually going to play a role in the articulation with the facet on the vertebral body. Okay? And to understand the facets, I'm actually going to flip over to this picture. Okay? So over here, this was the transverse costal facet that we talked about in a previous video. Notice that the tubercle of the rib articulates with that transverse costal facet. Well, ribs 11 and 12 don't have this tubercle, so therefore they don't articulate with the transverse process. Okay? Now, in terms of the other facets that are on the vertebral bodies, most of the vertebra have what we call a demi-facet. Okay? So here is the head of the rib. Notice the head of the rib, remember, is going to articulate with the bottom part of the vertebral body of the vertebra above and the upper part of the body of the vertebra below. And these are called demifacets. This would be the inferior costal demifacet of the vertebra above. This would be the superior costal demifacet of the vertebra below. Demi sort of means half. It means partial or it means half. And so the reason it's a demi-facet is because for the articulation of the head of this rib, half of the articulation is on the vertebra above, half of it is on the vertebra below. So they are 
demi-facets, okay? In order to make the complete facet, you have to have both vertebrae. That's why they're demi-facets. What's important to realize about that is that creates a distinction with the head of the rib. And so if we look at this, we see that we have a separate part for the inferior costal demi-facet above and a separate part for the superior costal demi-facet below. If we looked at the ribs 11 and 12, we would see instead of having two separate facets on their head, they only have a single large facet. And there's a reason for that. Look at these vertebrae T11 and T12. Do they have demi-facets? No. They do not have demi-facets. Their facets are completely on their bodies. Okay? They don't share a facet with the vertebra above or the vertebra below. Their facets are completely contained on their bodies. So they're no longer called demi-facets, they are complete facets. In other words, this facet of T11, this costal facet, will articulate with the head of rib 11. But this head of rib 11 is not going to need these two parts, it'll just be one complete large single articular facet that will articulate with the complete costal facet on T11. Okay? The same thing's going to be true of T12 and rib 12. Okay? Rib 12 is not going to have these two separate smaller facets on the head. It's going to have a complete large single articular facet that's going to articulate with the complete costal facet on T12. Hopefully that makes sense. Right? And again, neither of them have tubercles. Uh, because they don't articulate with the transverse processes of T11 and T12. In fact, T11 and T12 do not have the transverse costal facets like T9 and T10. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. The other thing about ribs 11 and 12 is that on their anterior ends, they're pointed more. Okay? And we can tell that right here. They're pointed because they're not articulating with costal cartilage up here. Rib 11 has a slight angle, meaning the angle of the rib, okay, right here, has a slight angle and a shallow costal groove. Rib 12 has neither of those things. Rib 12 is very short, much shorter than Rib 11 and all the other ribs, and it's inclined slightly inferiorly, slightly downward, okay? There's a few other exceptions. Rib number 10 attaches directly to the body of vertebra T10 instead of between the vertebra like the second through the ninth ribs. Okay? That goes back to the costal demi-facets. Okay? Remember that the head of most of the ribs is going to articulate with the demi-facet above and the demi-facet below. Meaning the demi-facet above is on the vertebra above, the demi-facet below is on the vertebra below. Okay? So, that sounds a lot like ribs 11 and 12. Why didn't I just include rib 10 with rib 11 and 12 in terms of that? Well, there's one major reason, and it has to do with genetic differences. Okay? If we look at T10 right here, in some individuals, this T10 right here, this costal facet, is a complete costal facet. It doesn't require a little bit of the demi facet above on T9. It's completely on T10. However, in some people, on T10, this is just a demi-facet, and then we would share a demi-facet with T9 above. So in some people, these are demi-facets. In other people, T10 has a complete facet by itself. And so it just depends on genetic differences as to whether uh, rib number 10 goes into a complete facet on T10, or if it goes into a demi-facet on T10 and a demi-facet on T9. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, ribs 11 and 12 have complete costal facets on T11 and T12. For rib number 10, sometimes it has a complete costal facet on T10. Sometimes it shares demi facets between T9 and T10. The other thing is that rib number 1 behaves very similarly to ribs 11 and 12 in the sense that T1, which is what articulates with rib number 1, T1 has a complete costal facet. T1 does not have demi-facet on the top. That makes sense because there's no thoracic vertebra above T1. Okay? So T1 would have to have the complete costal facet in order to articulate with rib number 1.
But in terms of the transverse costal facets, ribs number 1 through 10 all have a tubercle, and they all articulate with the transverse costal facets. It's only ribs 11 and 12 that lack that tubercle and do not articulate with these transverse costal facets. Okay, So hopefully this video made sense to you and gave you a lot of good information about the various ribs, how they attach, and so on and so forth. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.